Hello everyone, welcome to a chemistry video. This time I'm going to be doing the hybridization, axe, bond order, electron domain geometry, and molecular geometry for O3 or ozone. So let's start with hybridization, but before that we have to do the Lewis dot structure. So let's begin with the central oxygen. So we know there's three oxygens in total. Um, we can just start with one though, right? So let's just draw the dots. Now on paper, you can do like this, but um, it's just faster for me to do like these kinds of dots on uh, the computer. So oxygen has six valence electrons so we draw six of them and of course they are all paired up all right now alternatively you could draw one here one here and then you know this would be the same thing but you don't really know what's going to happen until the end so you know uh, what the choices you make currently they don't matter too much all right, so now we have our first atom. Let's add another oxygen. Maybe we can draw it farther away. So we can draw six on here, but you know, how is it exactly going to attach to this oxygen? Well, there's two atoms here already, or no, electrons here already. So technically, if we just drew, um, six electrons on the right side that would be one two three four five six seven eight valence electrons in total for this second oxygen which means you know it has a full uh, shell outer shell and that's good so we kind of set this guy up he's chilling. Now we need another oxygen and we'll just put it on the left. All right. But how are we going to attach this one? Well, we can try the same thing uh, by, you know, putting some electrons here. So we put six and assuming, you know, there's just this one uh, that is sharing. Well, that's only seven. And another problem is, well, the middle one uh, still only has six. So um, the middle one needs to, this one needs one. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, the only way for our electron in the middle to get two more electrons is to get two from this uh, oxygen on the left. So we can take these two and move them to uh, the bond. So we just plop them over here. All right, now that doesn't resolve the problem of uh, still needing one, but it does solve the issue here where the middle one needed two, so we can remove that one. So we can put check marks if you want. All right, now our guy on the left needs one more, and would you look at that? There's one lone uh, electron on the bottom there. So if you draw it like that, then we're set. Now, um, College Board prefers uh, lines rather than the dots to represent bonds. So after we resolve those problems, uh, maybe we're doing this on scrap paper. We can just remove it. Or actually, no, we could probably uh, draw it onto the main, uh, main paper or whatever you're doing this Lewis dot structure on. So... Uh, we would have oxygen in the middle. It has 
to the electrons here. It's a lone pair. And then it's bonded to another oxygen. And these two become horizontal. This horizontal line. Then we can just draw these six electrons on the right. And then double bond, you just draw two lines. Oxygen on the left. And this one has two lone pairs. So you can either continue to draw it like this, but more accurate would be, you know, just like this. So they actually come off at an angle here, kind of. And that is our Lewis dot structure. Now you could technically draw it like this. Um, however, if you do it like this, it's kind of like a step that you didn't really know you were going to have to take in the beginning. So you would only be able to do that if you had sufficient experience. I'm not going to recommend that, but uh, they're the same thing essentially. All right, so we're going to erase this stuff up here. Now we can talk about hybridization after getting the Lewis dot structure. So hybridization is S, P, D, etc. I think there's also F. You don't really get to F in college board stuff. There's probably only D at most, or even just P. But what does this mean, right? So S is basically the first layer. So kind of like that. It would be like, you know, where, where like hydrogen has, um, or helium has S because it just has, you know, the two up there. So it's basically the number of um, electron pairs that the atom has on the outermost level, the valence electrons. So if we just count how many pairs of electrons uh, our middle guy has, it's four. So there's two pairs in the double bond, there's one pair up there in the lone pair, and there's another pair in the single bond. So that's four in total. And S can only fit one pair, because it's only a size of two. P can fit three pairs, because you're allowed to have uh, six electrons in total. So you can just write sp3, because that's four in total. One plus three. All right, this is our hybridization. Let's move on to X. So X is um, something used uh, to describe the, it's kind of the same thing as hybridization, except you count the lone pairs and the bonds separately. So um, bonds, any type of bond, they're all counted as one bond. So like a double bond is the same as a single bond. They both co uh, contribute one. So there's two bonds. Um, and then there's one lone pair. One lone pair. So in X, which is like kind of a shorthand for describing this, we have A, which means you know there's a central atom, so that never changes essentially. X, X is the bonds, so we put two, and then E, that's the lone pairs, so you just leave it as E. You don't have to write a one, although I don't think it makes a difference. All right, so we did X. Now bond order. Bond order is kind of like the average uh, number of, what's it called? Average number of bonds per, you know, linear line that you draw on the model. So this is kind of confusing, but 
basically there's two bonds in total. One of them is a double bond, which is a bit stronger than a single bond, so that's why bond order exists. And you know the distance is a bit shorter. So um, I don't actually know the exact need for bond order, but it's a way to describe kind of the average length in a sense of the bonds in a molecule. So we would have kind of an average, right? One for the single bond plus two for the double bond over the total number of bonds that you can count. So that would be 1.5 or three over two, doesn't really matter. So bond order is 1.5. All right, let's move on. Electron domain geometry. So electron domain geometry is similar to the stuff that we've been doing here, except um, it's a 3D structure and there's a bunch of names for the different types of shapes that atoms will form. Just a quick example, right? So, um, if you know about Brinkelhoff, the acronym, or uh, whatever it's called, mnemonic, all of those elements will form diatomic molecules. So let's take um, F, right? Fluorine. F bonds to F, and it looks like this. So in this structure, if you were to draw it in 3D, um, it would kind of be like this. It would just be a straight line. That's why it's called linear. And carbon dioxide would look like this. So um, this is also linear, but you know, there's different shapes and, you know, this one, um, is tetrahedral because it's like a tetrahedron. Uh, all right. So basically the idea is, wait, yeah, there we go. So all of these shapes have their own name and you just have to say what shape it is if you consider the lone pairs and the bonds together. So for our guy here, it has three things coming off of it. So it's got three. And if something has three things coming off of it, then for the electron domain geometry, we're just looking at anything that's um, two electrons basically or more i mean lone pairs and any type of bond they're all counted as one thing that's coming off of the um off of the atom and there's three things here however um yeah just because this is a lone pair doesn't mean it's like non-existent because we're looking at electron domain geometry so anything that's a pair of electrons or Four electrons together. They all count it as the same thing. Now this is called trigonal planar because the ideal way to place three things as far apart from each other as possible on an atom or in a molecule or just any 3D shape that looks like this uh, from a center thing is to have them go out at 120 degrees uh, angle. That way, uh, you can imagine if uh, if this one were kind of turned into us from the viewer perspective, if it moved like into you out of the screen, then it would become closer to. Um, either of these or both of them at the same time so that would not be good but 
or if it was like if it turned that way then it would become closer to this one and you know it would be farther from this one however because it's getting closer to this one this one will want to go there which means it just wants to stay in this uh, trigonal planar structure so that's our answer trigonal planar you can look up all the names here all right now molecular molecular geometry is slightly different from an electron domain geometry we just only consider bonds we don't consider the uh, lone pairs so we still have to count the lone pairs in a sense into our initial structure because you can only get the electron uh, I mean you can only get the molecular geometry from the electron domain geometry because just because you don't technically count the uh, lone pair as you know something that contributes to the molecule uh, it still changes the shape of you know the atoms in the molecule so we start with trigonal planar but just replace one of them uh, let's say this one with a lone pair which means we're just going to delete it from existence so now we have this shape which is known as bent so it's called bent because uh, you know the chemists weren't very creative with this one so it's kind of like if you took a linear one and then you bent it that way so uh, the shape here is just bent all right that's the end of this video thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time